We've got our thumb, we've got most of our mitten. Now we're going to attach the thumb to the mitten. How are we going to do that? It's a lot like when we did the welt for this gnome. So what we're going to do is we're going to knit around to the point in the pattern, so it's knit five, then we're going to line up those next four stitches with the four stitches of the thumb. We've got our yarn coming off the last stitch we knit, and we're simply going to sort of knit two together across both needles and join them that way. And it just fairly simply attaches a thumb without, um, I mean, for a human, obviously, we couldn't do a joining method that was a method of closing. But for a gnome mitten, this works really well and minimizes the amount of fiddly placement sewing on afterwards that we would have to do and figuring out how to do that. Once I have the mitten complete um, and I'm telling you to sew the thumb down, I'm going to do that. It really wants to curl up. So we are going to do a little thing to take this end, the end coming off uh, the, the last stitch you knit there, and we are going to use it to just convince that thumb to be a little less like this and a little more like that. All right, I'm back. I've done the tiny bit of ribbing that gives us a bit more space to work with. So there are all sorts of ends going on here and I know you really wanna like bury this and get rid of it and get out of your way, but you're gonna leave it for a few steps from now. Uh, it's going to help us uh, pose Norwin more easily. So what we need to do is we need to encourage this thumb to be a little more uh, naturally posed. So we are going to use this end I'm going to thread it on a needle and then what we need to do is uh, it's convenient that the ladders from the I-cord don't really disappear for the first few rounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to go um, and we're going to grab, I, I mean you could start on the second one, I, the way I've done it so far is I've done once through the first ladder and then I go back down through where I think that would line up on the, the mitten and I grab, I go under and through there and then I need to do that again. So I go up the next little uh, ladder bit there. So we want to do it so that it looks still like there's a thumb there and not just a tiny little nub. So um, it's a bit of a, an art rather than a science, but um, let's try a little bit more like that. Now I think that that's going to look really good. This cast on end from the thumb, I'm just going to go right down the center of the I cord. Then I'm just going to bring it up and beside where that other end is. And I'm just gonna tie them off. Uh, trying to weave in the ends inside this mitten. Uh, well, I tried, it's maddening. There's no point even. I got like step two in and I was like, nope, this isn't how we're gonna deal with these ends. We're gonna deal with them some other way. So we are going to just uh, cut them fairly short. If you cut them too short, obviously they're, they might unravel or whatever. I did them about like this. If they're too long, they're gonna come and get up and in your way for the next step of uh, doing the arm, which would obviously be frustrating. So you just wanna get them short enough that you can stuff them down in there and continue working on. Now that we have two mittens, what we're going to do is tie these two cast on ends together. So one of the main things is to make sure that you get these really tight when you're tying them. And uh, what that can mean is that this may want to flip as you're working. You may want to anchor these both down under a mug or books or something like that. Um, I am just going to kind of hold them together after having tied the first knot and then I can tie this one and keep it really snug. All right, so now we need to bury these ends. Um, 
because they've already been knotted I don't think you need to do a lot in terms of securing them you'll notice it still wants to switch a bit around a bit if you um, one of the things I've done both times I've or however many times I've made these Norwins now it's been a while um, or it's been a lot of Norwins um, you can take the second end and grab a little bit of stitch from either side and go back and forth a few times so that um, you've got just a little bit of uh, reinforcement there um, just to make it look tidier um, maybe like our hands are touching or not so much just at the edges but a little bit overlapped or a little more firmly connected the knot alone can be a little bit um, I don't know gappy um, so just securing it in a few spots here with the second end can be a nice way to um, make that look a little more secure um, depending on how you like your sewing job then make that the front or the back appropriately if you've done a job securing that then I definitely recommend you do some way of um, because you've used this and you don't want that to loosen I definitely would do something where you are um, securing that yarn somewhere and then um, I like to leave myself nice long ends in case something comes out so that's why I'm going all the way up here before pulling that and trimming it and there are Norman's mitten arms.